Right, welcome back to session two. Today we're going to be talking about where we are on mission. Last week we repackaged and reintroduced our mission as a church. And please tell me that someone remembers our memorable, repeatable mission. Again, I'll pause for awkward silence. It's learning and sharing Jesus. As a point of context from where this mission came from, we drew it from the words of Jesus in Matthew 28. Those are the kids. Those are the words of the kids in the background. That's what we're all about here at Northridge. Uh, we're on mission here as well. <laughs> he says this in Matthew 28, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Uh, now, we have made our mission to be quite succinct in, a in an attempt to make it memorable and repeatable. In truth, Jesus' great commission is equally simple. But it does raise some questions regarding some of the information that we've left out. Today, we're going to look at where we're on mission. See, we're commissioned to go and make disciples of all nations. If you're like me, this evokes images of missionary journeys to the most remote uh, parts of the earth, the most untouched, unreached regions of the earth. Paul was a fantastic representative of what it meant to uh, heed the missionary call. Several times he literally left, literally left home to share the good news about Jesus with other parts of the world. Paul could be a good example of what it means to make disciples in all nations. What we should note, however, is that his second and third missionary journeys see him overlap some of the spots from his first journey. He doesn't literally go to all nations. The Spirit guided Paul to specific locations, sometimes more than once, and then compelled him to write pastoral letters to churches that had been established in those cities. He was discipling leaders, who would, in turn, disciple others, training them to become disciplers of others still. This is God's not-so-secret plan to make disciples in all nations. Since Paul, missionaries have traveled all over the world. Uh, the internet today makes evangelism and discipleship from your own living room possible. In Acts 1.8, Jesus gives us a little more specificity. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus tells his disciples, these are the people he's been camping with for the last three years, he tells them that God will send his Holy Spirit to give them all the power they'll need, and that they are meant to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. If it was good enough for Jesus' disciples, we believe it's good enough for us at Northridge. Now, obviously, we're not all meant to travel literally to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, ends of the earth. Rather, we need to identify our own Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Um, and, and we've done that. We've done exactly that here at Northridge. We identified Jerusalem, our Jerusalem, as our home, and I put home in quotation marks, whether this be your literal home or our church home at Northridge, we have identified that we are called to be on mission at home. 
being on home, excuse me, being on mission at home means discipling those that God has brought to us. For some, this is as intimate as pastoring your family. For others, it can mean discipling those who God has brought to Northridge. Caring for our home and our home church is essential. Uh, imagine an expert family counselor speaking engagements all over the world. He's written books, do, doing TED Talks. But in doing that, he's never with his family. Uh, what would become of that family? It'll lack the health it needs to thrive. We need to make a priority of caring in our homes and home church. And I want to say this. We are learning and sharing Jesus in our homes and home church. But that's not all. We've been called to be witnesses in Judea and Samaria. This is how I see all the, excuse me, this is how I see these regions, regions in our context. I would describe our Judea as our extended groups of friend, friends and families. These people may not be as intimate as the people who live in your home with you, or the ones you see as a part of your church family every week, but they are familiar. These are people you have relationship with. This is your Judea. This is the mission field that we are trying to train you and to have an impact with. To have the boldness to be a witness in, for Jesus in these relationships seems simple, but sometimes the social stakes can be high. As good Canadians, we never want to bother anyone with our, with our beliefs. However, if you remember back to last week when we talked about loving our neighbors, you'll remember that the greatest act of love that we can share, excuse me, you'll remember that the greatest act of love we can share with someone is to tell them about Jesus. I, I should probably remember that. This is a gift like no other. It can change their lives for now and for eternity. Well, if Judea is primarily in Pitt Meadows and Maple Ridge, the same could be said for our Samaria. But those of you who know your Bible history will know that the Samaritans were natural enemies of God's chosen people, the Israelites. While hopefully you don't have the same cultural tension that we saw between Israel and Samaria, um, but maybe you can describe the Samaritans of today as those who it might not be natural to love. For years, the church has done a poor job of engaging with people who might not fit in our church mold. I keep doing this. But make no mistake, we are called to be witnesses in Samaria. As a church, we've formed some beautiful relationships with people in the thick of recovery from drugs and alcohol. To be honest, my affection for the guys I've met in this ministry is similar to the learning and loving relationship with, I have with Jesus. The more I get to know the stories of these guys, the more, I, the more I admire and love them. Because I don't have all the necessary resources, because we don't have all the necessary resources that we need to love people in recovery the way we need to, we have partnered with two local organizations. Celebrate Recovery and Hope for Freedom are faith-based groups with the skills and training that is needed to care for these people in need. We are learning and sharing Jesus in Maple Ridge and Pitt Meadows. All of this is great, but that's not all we're meant for. We were called to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. Again, it isn't practical or even beneficial for every one of us to leave our homes here in Maple Ridge, Pitt Meadows, and to go and be a witness to the world for Jesus. Make no mistake, there are times when God calls us to do just that. But sometimes we can leverage what we have to be a blessing for those who are, who are already doing ministry in another country. Over our church history, we have sent many short-term teams to support missionaries and projects in other parts of the world. Most recently, we sent Brent Michelle Ellingson to Nicaragua. Today, we partner with Costa Rica Kids and Amparo International in Nicaragua as they provide the acute care that we are not able to provide from Canada. In the name of Jesus, we do what we can to bless these missionaries and the mission that they are on. We are learning and sharing Jesus in Costa Rica and Nicaragua, our ends of the earth. Let me wrap up by saying this. We are providing hands-on training locally by discipling the people in our homes and our home churches. We are partnering with organizations to do what we are not skilled or trained enough to do locally and abroad. 
all of this serves to act out our mission in our Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. This is where we do mission. That's all I have for this session. Until next time, be safe and be blessed.